yeah, quickly about me. My name is Tim Stedinger Boyce from Germany. Uh, I'm a first thought programmer and I work at Teramate. I had a couple of mentors in the past. I organized this myself. I didn't know about programs like Outreachy, and this was also before I went into computer si science. And yeah, I mentioned in here, I was inspired by the sponsored page, and this has been my mentors. And they profoundly changed my life for the better. I will be forever grateful. And I would like to, to tell you the essence about how that worked and how I organized it. Uh, to make this successful over and over again. And so yeah, that's the goals for the session, to, to convince you to make the decision to become a mentor and then um, tell you how to find a mentee that fits for you and how to then build up this relationship that the, the mentee reaches his goals and yeah. So also how to develop a trusted connection with the mentee that is really deep and because that is where the most value is, in my opinion. So, but before we start, I would like to quickly explain what uh, mentor, mentoring means for me as I discovered there's quite uh, different ways to understand what mentoring is. So for me, mentoring cannot be project-based. <laughs> that would be coaching. And mentoring is, is also a one, one process, but it is, it's very much that the mentor would help a mentee to find uh, his big picture career goals and, and also understand their own values and how they can leverage their talent and their best qualities and the mentor can also ha help the mentee to deal with or to develop some structure and give a little bit of accountability to to reach the long-term goals and um, but yeah mostly the mentor doesn't like help with short-term goals and that are performance based or something mm. Yeah, and there are lots of reasons to, to become a mentor, in my opinion. I, first of all, if you lighten up the path for someone else, this will also brighten your own path. And also um, yeah, uh, you will g get a profound sense of fulfillment if you see that your mentee is growing and is overcoming challenges through the advice that you gave that should be very fulfilling and it's a special special thing to have this trusted one-on-one -on -one relationship where you really share open things about each other and about yourself and and you see the mentee learn from this it's very great so next I have a short exercise for you and I would like you to discuss what the differences between mentoring and coaching are and what do they have in common. So maybe we'll set the timer for five minutes and, and then we, we will discuss your solutions. We just need it. Uh, ah, I use it. Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry, give me that one. Well, I, yeah, I'm going to use this one. Okay, so for me, I see like different levels of commitment between these two. Like to me, mentoring is a very broad and general term. Um, and it can mean like there's formal mentoring, informal mentoring, there's group mentoring, there's one on one mentoring. But coaching has a like more of a coded meaning to me. Like if you're being coached by someone, to me that you know 
it sounds like it, it's a more narrow definition. It's like kind of like a subset of a mentor, I guess. But it's like to me, I, if someone's coaching you, you're getting a lot more like regular feedback from them. Like I see that as kind of like a very hands-on, very engaged relationship. Um, whereas mentoring can be that, I guess. But I kind of see it as more broad. But I think in general, like between the two, at least as I see them, what do they have in common? Um, I'm thinking like it just again that kind of that. Uh, working with, you know, again, I think it could be a group. Well, I don't know if they're both. Um, you're working with someone to help them develop in some part of their career, their life, their kind of aspirations. Um, so I think it's really about like the relationships is probably what they have in common, or that's what I would think of. Um, it's kind of the core piece between them, I guess. So I think back to professional settings I've been in. Uh, like a call center, I'll use the call center example. You have supervisors who are like people's like manager and then you have coaches, right? And coaches have always been a, you're hitting a performance thing. You, you have a goal that you need to meet and the coach is there to help you on that specific goal. It's not necessarily project-based, but it's like there's an outcome that you're looking to get from that person and you're trying to make sure that it, that it happens. Um, I think even the term coaching, if you think about like, like a life coach, right? Like that a life coach is very much so it's not just about, you know, like just generally a life coach is there to improve your life, theoretically, right? That's, that's really, it's, it's goal oriented versus just generalized kind of support. So I think somebody who is a, a mentor in that case is somebody who's just kind of been there and somebody you could ask questions to and, and discuss of um, versus a coach that's really, you know, there's a result at the end of it. So that, that's how I see it. feel like coaching is for sports. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what do they have in common? I think knowledge sharing, I feel like that's a big one. I don't know if, if, if that was shared already, but the styles can be different, but I think like the common thing is like there is definitely transfer of knowledge. Yeah, for mentorship as well. Some kind of knowledge. It n doesn't need to be like skill-based knowledge necessarily. I feel like, I don't know, my perception of coaching is like a sports coach. And that is more skill based generally. But I feel like mentoring and coaching have both non skill based and skill based knowledge sharing. Um, I feel like coaching is sort of like therapy ish. I don't know. I don't think I've ever had a formal coach, but when I think of coach, I think life coach or career coach or something of the, like that nature, it seems to me more formal than mentoring would be. And like there's a real, a very solid end goal, whereas mentoring may or may not have that. I think so as well. I think mentoring is usually more long-term focused and there is not really a goal defined and certainly not a performance goal. And yeah, why we coaching usually has something like that and I've achieved a goal, a, a, a coach to, to tackle a specific problem. And my mentor might help me to discover a long-term thing. And that is uncertain when the new mentoring relationship starts and also mentoring might take different turns um, and that's fine but coaching usually doesn't take different turns and could be focused on a specific outcome mm, yeah so as soon as you decided that you want to become a mentor the question is how do you find a, a mentee that fits for you and I think you should really go on a value-driven approach because that is what makes, uh, what's uh, yeah, what's relevant for, for, for being able to trust someone. And so you should really approach with, with your values from the beginning. Otherwise you, yeah, you will find out later that it doesn't really fit. And so, yeah. I don't know how this works in this programs like Outreachy, 
me, I had to find my mentors myself and I had to choose very wisely who I'm going to ask. And so I made up a list of values that are important for me and is that that's much more important than the field of that, that my mentor would be in the same field. And it's nice if he is in the same field as me, but much more important is that he has the same values as I have. Um, I, as Jasmine, as you know, kind of what, what kind of person you're looking for, I would be very creative. Um, so no matter every stone from a colleague, teacher, um, neighbor, everybody could be potentially a mentor or a mentee. I found one of my mentors on GitHub and now I think it was a nice library that I used and he was very friendly and, and we've been mentoring for three years weekly and that was really great. Another mentor I found because I approached him after a meetup and where he gave a talk mm. and another mentor I just approached him when he was smoking and, and he was the backyard. <laughs> so there's be very creative, there's no right way, I think there has to be three strategies and that's quite, yeah, quite good stuff. Awesome. And if you find this person, I would introduce the idea of mentoring um, because we set up a first meeting and in this very first meeting, I would check that my assumptions about the core values are true, which uh, would, in my opinion, is the most important thing to do in the first meeting, to check if you align there and if you have the similar core values. If not, then just thank them for their time and move on. That is the best thing you can do out of respect for the both of you because that might be a waste of time for him to, to give you his best advice if you don't really do something with it because you think it doesn't, it's not applicable or something. So yeah, I, I would be really, yeah, making sure that you align on your core values and then you can have a really awesome relationship later on. Mm. In the second meeting, I would write a mission statement and to co-create this, this is, this defines the purpose of your relationship and why do you even do this meeting and it's very important, it, it should be clear and concise, not long, it Two sentences, maybe maximum three, and that's enough. And there you align your expectations for two years later, and also you you give a vision and a path of where you want to go. And yeah, if you don't know where you're going, chances are you won't get there. Mm -hmm. But that's just very important to for it aligns here, and it's motivation based. And another thing is, I haven't done this already, and this can be very very shitty for a mentee. If you meet your mentor all the time and you go there and you talk about your problems, it might feel like a one-sided relationship and very unbalanced. And I didn't have this emotion when we had this mission statement. And this mission statement usually also states how this is gonna, that the mentor intentionally wants to do this, like he wants to help you and that there is something he gets out of it as well. Like the, the renewed passion for why he went into this industry or that he, like that he gets some, mm, yeah, that it's fulfillment from, from, from this whole experience. And that sentence is super important, I think, for the mentee, that he knows he's not abusing someone and that everything is fine, it's balanced, and he doesn't owe anything to anyone. It's just okay. I think that's very important for mental health of a mentee. And yeah, if you have this mission statement written, you should spend a short amount of time to also talk about the form, how you want to meet. In my case, that has been also different with my different mentors. Like one of my mentors, the one I met on GitHub, we haven't met each other for the first two years. It was all Google Meet. And we had by default a weekly meeting on Sunday, 4 p.m. And if something in between came up, we would use WhatsApp. And that was very good that you had this form defined at the second meeting and use it for the whole entirety of a week, more than two years. 
rich mentor in it, um, because he made it very easy to attend things. Somebody didn't have a time, or he had a client a meeting, it automatically stepped over to the next meeting. Um, of course, his team was what made it simple to to, to engage or watch something that was live. And also, if there were questions, it was very clear where to answer them or where to ask them. It was yeah, that was very useful to define this and not think over about the form over and over again. Mm. Yeah, the, 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 the last important thing I want to share is that the trust is so important. I mean, to me, that's the most important thing. And this will be become impossible if you haven't chosen someone with the same core values. Then something inside you won't feel comfortable making yourself vulnerable. But if you if you did choose someone who had the right core values, you can really open yourself up, and that that can really be life changing for the mentee. Mm, one of my mentors, my first mentor actually, he I learned this from him. How important this this honesty is and this this vulnerability and. Um, I chose always my mentors to be people who resemble where I wanted to be at some point in life. And because I thought, okay, this high career goals, they need to, they correlate to happiness in the career ladder. <laughs> and, and it was very, very enlightening that uh, somebody tells you, no, <laughs> happiness and success don't necessarily correlate. And this is maybe not easy to, to tell and to be so open, but the mentee for, yeah, can gain a lot of knowledge and wisdom from this, and I think it's super important to absolutely open your heart and put your soul on the table, tell the mentee how things happened in your life, what you regret, what went good, what you underestimated, and also the really big things. That's super important. And there will be time for sure when the mentoring relationship will become difficult and when things are not going easy or problems will arose. And I would advocate for yeah, tackling them head on, saying what pleased you. And usually they can be changed quite easily or there's high motivation on both sides to get back on track with the relationship and continue. And in my experience, the relationship always got better than before after there was an issue and was tackled with full trust and openness. And that just made it more deep and stronger. So yeah, that's important and not just left it. Go somewhere and not address it. It's not good. Um, yeah, that's my my last exercise, and Fritz, I would like to invite you to write down a list of some notes in your in your smartphone or computer of personal characteristics and of what should be the ideal mentee for you, and do it yourself for no person the same. So. I did that usually to help me to find the right person to, to approach for mentoring. And we can really use our brain because our brain is awesome at pattern recognition. And if you engage your brain uh, with, with kind of what is the ideal mentee, what is a good mentee that I would still like to work together with, and what are no-goes in a person that I do not want to have a mentoring relationship with. I did wrote this down, and now the it's, it's quite simple. Like I go through life, and as soon as somebody displays or shows this character uh, characteristics, I know exactly that, okay, maybe I should ask here or evaluate this a little bit deeper. And it works automatically. It's awesome. So... Yeah, I give you maybe 10 minutes or five minutes. Yeah.
Let's have some good prayer and be right back. This mic is better. Thank you for the feedback.
So I, I think uh, just keep that list for yourself. And, uh, and if you find someone who you think represents this characteristics, then don't be afraid and ask to initiate this. If this person is open for this, then chances are that if, if, if you can confirm that this values are true and that can be an amazing relationship and yeah it's good to yeah justin yeah yeah go for it yeah all right here let me let me go first i'll go first um so i i'm gonna start with no goes so I definitely someone who needs a lot of support. Someone who really needs constant interaction, right? Is probably not good for me because I'm just busy, and so I wouldn't be good for that, right? So I think that would be a no go. But I also think again, you want someone who needs a lot of support, who, who not doesn't a lot of support. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would also say someone who doesn't necessarily take advantage of resources when they're provided. I think that's also very frustrating for me if I've given somebody resources and they don't use those resources first before really talking, you know? Like, I think that's also probably no-go. And I would prefer that as someone who can't Google, right? Like, that's probably a, a I wouldn't be a good mentor for in that situation. Um, acceptable, um, and I, I like to think of acceptable, the way you read it, it's kind of like the minimum, right? Yeah. Um, someone who's curious. Um, I think curiosity is really important. Um, someone who wants to, uh, discover how to do things better. They're not just trying to figure out how to just do, they want to do more, right? Um, they're learning to grow, right? Um, I think that's really important. And I think honestly, ideal, um, and I'm, I'm gonna put the opposite of what I said down below at the top, because I always, I don't think it's always I, how it is, but independent. I think somebody who is able to take guidance and run with it, break a few things, come back and say, oh, drop the base, now what, right? Um, and then somebody who is looking for history or guidance or wants to understand the deeper meaning behind things, I think that's also really something I value in an ideal somebody is, is they want to understand how we got to where we are, right? I always like to know the history about a problem myself, and so I always like to talk, and I want to tell you why we got here, right? And I think that's something I would find ideal in somebody who wants to uh, talk with me because I want to share that history and then learn their history myself and add it to my own personal knowledge of the situation they're in. So. But I'll try to speak really clearly and very loud. Um, so I'm going to go from ideal to acceptable to no-goes, just because to me that's kind of like, it follows my enthusiasm, I guess, is if I'm like looking at someone and thinking about my, you know, possibly starting a, a kind of mentee, mentor kind of relationship with them. So I think like for me, like definitely a lot of echoing of the things that you said actually, and as you were speaking, I was writing things down and adding them to my list. Um, but for ideal, I think like being open to feedback, which was uh, something that uh, I w came up when you were like, oh, thanks for the feedback. And I was like, you know, like that's actually a really good point. Um, you know, someone who's receptive, because someone who's like goes straight into that kind of defensive, like, oh, like this is, you're like, taking it personal, like you're, you're, you're gonna have a really hard time trying to build something stronger with that person, because then they're always gonna kind of be on the defensive. So like someone who's open to feedback, I think is really important. Um, similarly, kind of like earlier in the presentation, like wanting similar kind of things in life. Doesn't have to be like a perfect overlap, but having a general interest in things like, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in my no-goes. Um, I think being honest and direct, I just, you know, like I don't, I like it when people can really speak on how they're feeling, be vulnerable and be upfront about what's going on. Um, because then I feel like that empowers me as a mentor, because if you can't be honest or be direct with me, then it's gonna be really hard for me to kind of relate with you or understand like what are you actually going through. Um, and then the things I added from you was, was one was about being curious. I think that's, that's really important. Like it just, 
it makes me excited. Like when I have some working with someone who is really curious about these things, and it's like, oh well, you know, I know a lot about this, and I can help you, and it just it makes it like an easier bridge. And then I also added low key, like, you know, like something that's not super intense. Like we can keep it casual. Um, maybe there's times where it's higher intensity, and that's okay. But like in general, like, and I'll probably talk a little bit more about that in my acceptable and no goes. There'll be a spectrum there. But under my acceptable column, um, not the best at communication. You know, I think there's kind of room to go either way on the scale there, but I think being a good communicator, especially in the tech world, where there are lots of people who struggle with those kind of skills, um, I'm willing to like, you know, if someone's willing to at least work on it, that's like, I, I can work with you. Maybe you're not the best communicator, but you know, if I can see that you're putting in effort, I, I can live with that, you know, we can work on it. I wrote in quotes like needy, um, like it probably depends on how exactly that is, but like um, I'm trying to help, but then there's like, I don't know how to describe it actually, this is why I put it in quotes, because it's like, um, you know, sometimes people are trying to understand something that's complicated or difficult, and they're trying to, you know, get that clarification, so again, it can easily go on either side into kind of more in the ideal, like being curious, but they can also kind of go in the no-goes, which I'll, I'll mention mine. And then I also wrote under acceptable uh, newbie to the task or field or area, but willing to try. Like if, if I can feel that you're like willing to work and that you know every time that we meet as a mentor, mentee, like I see you like working towards something and you're, you're making an effort. Maybe it's not perfect or maybe it's not ideal, but I see that you're putting in effort. So like that, I, I can work with that. Under no goes, like for me personally, I wrote um, not people relationship centered, um, especially I think in open source, like, you know, I get that everyone has to eat and put food on their table and buy groceries and, you know, have a life. Um, but like, I just get really burnt out, I guess, if I'm like working with someone who's like so focused on just like, you know, compensation or like, you know, really trying to focus on that angle. And it's like, you know, I get that it, there's a necessity that's there, but like, it's different because especially in open source, a lot of what we do is so value driven. So like, that's really important that you're kind of thinking about people and relationships beyond just the context of what you're doing. Um, I also wrote demanding, which I think that's like the opposite of needy. You know, when it starts getting into that category, I'm like, mm-mm, nope. Um, similarly, I wrote, um, wrote treat others poorly, parentheses, like kiss ass kind of thing. You know, like if you, if I notice you treating me differently and then you go and be rude or you're like short with someone else, like man, like I am gonna lose my enthusiasm so fast. Like I, I, I hate that. And especially when you're in positions of influence and in community, I, I was, it's different from my time when I started in Fedora nine years ago. And it's not just in Fedora really, but generally in life. Um, so like I, I, that really bothers me. And if I see you like, treating me differently than how you treat other people in a way that's not okay, I'm not okay with you, <laughs> I guess is, is one way to say it. Um, then the last thing I wrote under my no goes is um, from the keynote this morning, which I thought was really insightful, like I've never thought about it, like maybe there are dumb questions. And then what I wrote was asking questions without caring about the answer, because I thought that was a really insightful thought from this morning's keynote. And uh, it is, that is actually very frustrating when you're like putting in the time and you realize that the person who's asking like actually, it just is a waste of time. So those are my ideal, acceptable, no goes. Who's next? So as I've been listening, I think I realize all of this applies to like colleagues, pretty much. Like working with colleagues, like you want these sorts of characteristics in your colleagues as well. <laughs> uh, and also that I think my answers are going to be reflective of both of yours. So I'm not gonna go too deep into them, except if it's a little bit unique. So I'll start with the ideal. Uh, listens with the goal of understanding. Um, doesn't listen literally, you know, especially when you're mentoring across cultures, uh, listening with a goal of understanding is I mean, just listening is probably the acceptable, but really trying to understand takes it that extra step. Uh, communicates freely and effectively. 
uh, embraces and internalizes feedback and shares things about themselves. Uh, acceptable is open to learning new things, accepts feedback, has time, energy, motivation to work on themselves or the project, and is friendly. That's a base level for me. If you're not friendly, it's, it's not gonna work out. Uh, and no goes, uh, doesn't listen, um, doesn't adhere to community standards of treating each other, um, makes excuses, or puts other people or ideas down. So, uh, yeah, my one is also very similar to <laughs> all of you, and I also agree with what you say, that it's basically what you want in a co-worker and also what you don't want in a co-worker. Yeah, totally. And for me, ideal is passionate about the topic. Um, I don't like working with people that doesn't care about the topic that we are working on, uh, probably because I always try to work on things that I'm passionate about. Um, then ideal also hardworking. Hard hardworking, like, yeah. Um, understand, uh, this is a weird thing, but it's important to me. They must understand that they are just a normal human being. They are not special. Um, they are just another more pers person in the world. That's okay, like everyone else is another person in the world. Yeah, and, and you are not more entitled to more things or you are not spe more special than others. And they might be kind and willing to do good. <laughs> then for acceptable, if they put effort in it, but they do not really care what they do, it's fine. Like that's the very minimum you put effort on what you do. And no go is that they think they are special and they brag about it, especially the people that try to create a superior image of their of themselves and present that to others, like I'm superior except with Robert. Robert is superior to others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, uh, if they do not accept feedback, uh, that's also a no-go. And behaves to others in a hostile way. And I notice this a lot on mentorship programs because usually a lot of people apply and one person gets accepted. And there is a lot of competition to get that place. A lot of people is really kind, but there are some that are really competitive and a little bit of harsh to others. When that happens, I immediately know that I don't want to work with that person. And I think that's almost true for most of the mentors. So if you are a mentee, try not to do that. It's not helping your way to the position that you want. And that's all. I'm going to skip over the ones that we already, like I think a lot of them were shared that we uh, that I have. Uh, one thing that I have is open to learning and that's different in, a, in the sense that I want someone who, who is not there to, to achieve, I don't know, like a certificate or just like, or complete the mentorship and have something on your resume. I feel like if that's the goal, the, the mentorship experience goes very differently or the internship experience goes very differently uh, versus if they're open to learning and actually skill building. So that's like in my ideal. Um, one more is, uh, like this might touch more upon like cultural uh, understanding and sentiments, but it's more like I want some, uh, my ideal mentee could be from, uh, from an underrepresented community that I belong to. I feel like that, that really like builds a shared experience and helps to, like helps me empathize better with with what the mentee might be going through. Um, acceptable, I, I don't have anything except like if it's, it's acceptable, if they have other commitments like day job or other programs, it's just like uh, it have, you have to be mindful that, that that mentorship or internship is not that they're all doing. And no goes is uh, again a very cultural thing, but someone who's older than me, uh, and that's why I feel like that that's not ageist, but it's more that in the culture that I grew up in, it's not seen ni nice to correct someone who's older than you, and so I would struggle a lot mentoring someone 
uh, who's older than me because I would not want to teach them or correct them or point out new things to them because I'm like, no, it's okay, you, you know more than me because you are elder to me, so it's okay. So I, I just feel like I would struggle a lot with that. So that's a no-go for me. So I have a question for that. It's an age thing or it's an appearance thing? Like, I'm a little bit older than you, but it, like, I think I'm not look very old, so <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you have also that feeling with me? I hope not. No, you're actually right about that because I thought like, okay, at first I thought that maybe you might be older. But so, but then when I found out that you're close to me in age, that that's fine. But it's, but I, I'm pretty sure I will know if someone is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I feel like I would just know if someone is older to me. It's not, so it's not necessarily appearance. I feel like if I don't know, and they might be older, but I just don't know, that might make it more easy for me to just like correct them or be like, you know what, that's not like maybe try doing it this way. But if I know they're old, it doesn't matter how young they look. <laughs> well, one, I'm probably the oldest person in this room. Oh, we, we checked the ages already, okay. Uh, Samara, you and I co-mentored someone who's older than both of us. Roland. So you've already done it. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, you should say that into the mic. Well, I didn't know that Roland was older than us, and now I can't say anything to him now that I know that he's older. So yeah. Yeah. I have been mentored by somebody who's much younger than me. Um, and so, you know, even as somebody who is older and, you know, kind of, I, I, I actually thought you were older than me. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it, I think it is different and it is something, well, it, yeah, I didn't really, I've learned that age doesn't really matter and you can learn something from anybody. And I think that's probably more important is age and experience is not the same, that you can meet people who have experiences that you'll never have had and they'll be more than capable as a mentor. So, I don't know, age, age is not a factor, I guess. The opposite of what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I agree with you. I think it definitely should not be a factor. In fact, I appreciate people who, who might not be in that walk of life. For someone who's like really old to go back to college is a very diffi difficult experience for them to be, like to be, <laughs> uh, to be in that environment can be uncomfortable. So I think I really applaud that, but I know that that's very uncomfortable for me to do. So yeah, it's just one of those things. A cultural thing, I think. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. This was uh, amazing, really, really insightful. And I also, after the session, I have to write down um, some of your things that you mentioned. This is awesome. Um, yeah. I wanted to say uh, my last words. This book is uh, my mentor Bible. It, it taught me everything that I know about mentoring. It's called One Minute Mentoring, how to find and work with a mentor and why you'll benefit from being one. I highly recommend this. It guides you through all steps of the mentor journey. And whenever I get stuck somewhere, I, I look up the, the corresponding chapter here and it gets me unstuck. Also, if you ever end up in a mentoring relationship and there's some issue or something and I can help, then just send me an email. Maybe I have an idea because that's a topic that's very important for me. Like, like I said, I'm these people here on my t-shirt, they had a profound impact on in my life. And I, I wish that more people get the pleasure of having a successful mentoring relationship. And I'll do everything in my power to support this. I will also publish a blog post about the things I didn't talk about here, like that it's very great if the mentor shares his or her network with the mentee, and also that there's, I would, would do retrospectives in a mentoring relationship to once in a while look how this is going, and if you work 
if you make progress according to the mission statement and yeah and also how to be a good mentee i think it's not so it's that difficult but you might have to know that and your um, the, your list has been exceptionally useful for a starting point to write a blog post about this <laughs> and yeah thank you very much <laughs>